Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children. We're excited about all of these stories that we've been teaching you boys and girls and also you adults. Today we're going to be learning a new story. We're going to be starting another one, and this is one of the most exciting ones that we've ever told. It's about a little Arab girl from Syria. And as we begin to start reading from God's Word, we pray that each of you will follow along with us and learn these Bible truths. And this is what God desires of every person in the world. And it says that Christ was on this earth, and he says he was telling his disciples, a little while and ye shall not see me. Now this is in John chapter 16, verse 16. A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples, What is this that he saith he goeth to his Father? And he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned unto joy. And then we come to verse 27. For the Father loveth you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came from him. He was already in heaven. He came from the Father. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world, and go to the Father. This is why he's wanting his disciples to know that he came from God. And then verse 29, his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and he s now are we sure that thou knowest all things, he's an all-knowing God, and needeth not that any man should ask thee, by this we believe that thou camest forth from God. And he said, do you believe? And that's the question that we're asking all of you today. Do you truly believe that God sent his son to this earth to go to the cross to die for us. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the truths of thy word. We rejoice in these missionary stories for the faithfulness of all of these precious saints that have gone forth throughout all of the world to teach the good news to every person that will listen and that will be obedient to thee to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house and that thou will bring forth fruit as the word goes forth. Bless these wonderful truths from thy word today. May every person that is listening prepare their hearts to know the truth, the way, and the life. And thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. We always start out with these missionary stories that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Now Paul wrote this and we're going to learn a lesson about Paul as we start this story about this little Arab girl. And Paul wrote this and the gospel means good news. So we must understand that's why we teach you the good news because that's what the gospel is. So the gospel means that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now Paul knew the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures. So this is why he's writing this because at this time in 1 Corinthians, this was the only book that they had was the Old Testament scriptures. And he is telling them that 
in the Old Testament, which is the foundation for the new, that this was the Christ that was to come to go to the cross to die for us. So as we come to Philippians 1.12, he said, But I would, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Now Paul was in prison when he wrote the book of Philippians. And he knew that everything that happened to him was to help the gospel to go further. That is what you must understand as we listen to these stories about the missionaries and the trials and the difficulties that they had in giving out the truth of God's word. Also, Paul knew what it was to suffer for giving out the truth of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Because every person that is a child of God, God wants you to give out his truth. And that is the gospel. That's why we teach you the good news. But Paul, when he was giving out the word of God, he was punished for the truth. And he was even put into prison. Paul and Silas was put into prison for teaching the word of God. So, how many of us have been put in prison because of the Word, giving out the Word? Not very many in these days. But Paul knew that, as he learned, not very many people wanted to know about their sins. Not very many people wanted to know that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and that He would be the one that was going to die for their sins. And this is what we must tell everyone, that this Jesus that died was the one that would cleanse us from all sin. So as Paul was telling this, he was beaten and put in prison. And the best part about all of this is at midnight, they were singing praises to God and praying. And they had been beaten and put in prison for giving out the word of God. And in the book of Philippians, we learn that Paul, even though he was in prison again, as he was writing the book to the Philippians, he says, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. So as we learn these truths about even these little children that suffer because they receive Christ. So here, as they were singing praises to God at midnight and praying, God sent an earthquake. And when he sent an earthquake, the doors of the prison were open, and the jailer, he got a sword and was going to kill himself. And Paul said, do thyself no harm, for we are all here, because this meant that he would have died if the prisoners were taken, were, were, had, were taken from prison. So Paul knew this, that his life was in danger, and Paul, he knew that Paul and Silas had a great testimony for the Lord. Now, I wonder if people can see that in us. And then he said to the jailer, he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So here we have what Paul wanted this jailer to know and what God wanted this jailer to know. And his whole household was saved. So this was also a furtherance to the gospel. Now what about when we are persecuted and we have great afflictions? We must look at that as an opportunity for the gospel to go farther. That's what the sufferings are to do. So as we come to this lesson today, we come to the lesson about the little Arab girl. And her father was a very important man in the village. He was the one that went to the mosque and called out to prayer five times a day. And he would call out, and remember these people are Muslims, and they believe in a God called Ali, and Mohammed is his prophet. Five times a day he would call to prayer. So it was his daughter's Hyatt's duty to take his lunch every day. And one day as she was bringing his lunch, she met her friend, she had a very best friend, and her name was Muna. And this day, she has someone with her, and her name is Aunt Mary. And she said, oh, Hyatt, 
this is a very good storyteller. Would you like to come? Oh, she said, I love stories. She said, well, come to my house this afternoon and you can hear her stories and bring your friends. She said, but I'm not going to bring my brother. He's always spying on me and getting me in trouble. So she looked at Aunt Mary and she thought that this looked like a gun. And she knew she was going to be late getting her father's lunch. And she said to her before she left, she said, is that a gun? She said, oh, no. She said, this is just something that I use to help me to tell the stories to boys and girls. You come this afternoon and you're going to see this. So they left and as she started on, her father came down from the prayer time and he said, why were you late? She said, oh, I met Muna and she invited me over to her house, but she didn't say anything to her father about the storyteller because Muna and her family went to the only Christian church in the village. And she knew that her father would not want her to listen to any stories at her house. So he didn't ask what she was going to do. But she knew that her father called all of those that were not a Muslim that they were infidels and unbeliever. So he said, it's only two more weeks until vacation is over. So he said, you will be going to school and you must learn all of the Quran from the holy book. That is what they learned from. And then we'll have a great celebration. And she said, well, when Nader learns all the Quran, and she said, well, why can't you have a celebration when I learn all the Quran? Why are boys more important than girls? And he just laughed. And she said, it's going to seem strange going to school. They went to school in the afternoon, two hours, and in the morning, four hours. And she said, I don't know if I'm going to like that or not. She said, but I do want to learn to read and write. And he said, yes, and you must pay very close attention, especially to your teacher that teaches you from the holy book. And then after he left, she started back on back home. And she knew she wasn't going to tell her brother about going to Aunt, to Muna's house to hear Aunt Mary. But she was thinking on the way home, I don't know why Nader, my, her brother's name was Nader, always wants his own way. And she said, he wants to tag along with me every place I go. And if I don't let him, he spies on me, and then he tells lies and gets me in trouble. So that afternoon, when the time came for her to go to hear the story, she was the first one there, and she was so excited, and she s sat right on the front row, and Aunt Mary put the easel up, like Mrs. Davis has all the time, and the board. She had never seen anything like this before, and she told the children this day, she said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, this is one thing that she said that God is the creator. And we have here John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we have the truth about God's Word. Because we also have in these lessons the truth of God creating the heaven and the earth. So in Hebrews 11.3, we have, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Through faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is just believing what God says He will do. So through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, and there is no other way but through the Word of God. You must write these verses down because God's Word says, in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Also, he said, all things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. And in Psalm 33, 6, it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath 
of his mouth. Well, she understood this story because she had been taught Ali that they believed in, that he was the one that made the world, and the next day she went and she saw that she was telling the story about Adam and Eve. So she listened very carefully. But then when the Aunt Mary told her about Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, she knew that she had sinned because she was hated Nader, her brother, and she knew that she lied and disobeyed her father. But she didn't think anything much about the punishment that God was going to give to all of those who do not receive the Lord as Savior because she had been taught that the angels in heaven write down the good things and the bad things that you do. And if you do more good things than bad, then you go to heaven. So she had been taught this, and now she, it's hard when children learn a thing that is false for them to think a different way. So that's why we must get this truth out to these children while they are young. So she talked about Adam and Eve and that God created Adam and Eve and that he created them, Adam, out of the dust of the earth. And he took a rib out of Adam and created Eve. And so after Adam sinned, then she said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So through Adam's sin, the whole world is in darkness and have sin when they are born. They, we are born sinners. So she knew that. So the next day she came and she, the next day they talked about Abraham. And the teacher said, we're going to talk about Abraham today. Well, Hyatt said, I know about Abraham. He's the father of Ishmael. And Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. The Arabs. And she said, yes, that's true. And also he's the father of Isaac and Isaac. And they are the fa father of the Jews. And she knew about Abraham. So these stories were not that different to her, what she had heard, because she thought that Ali had created the heaven and the earth and had made Adam and Eve her God. So after this, she said, now today we're going to tell you something very exciting. This is about the Lord Jesus Christ. And she put this up and told him, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, this was something different than she had ever heard. She had never heard anything like this. But this day, while she's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, her brother Nader comes in. And she told that, Jesus Christ was in heaven, just like we learned from the lesson that we read, and that he came from heaven and was born as a baby, and he grew up. So, and the shepherds came to see the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they came to see Christ, he was the true Son of God. The angels announced the birth of Jesus. And then she said, that's not all, but he went to the cross to die for our sins, because he never sinned. And she had never heard this before. And she thought, he is truly God, and he is God's only son. So all of a sudden, she heard someone cough. And it was her brother Nader standing at the back of the room. And he was coughing so hard, he had to leave the room. So when he left the room, she, Aunt Mary was finishing telling the story, and she wanted to talk to her friend before she went home. Well, she saw her friend, Hi, Muna, talking to Aunt Mary, and Aunt Mary was reading from the Bible. And so she didn't say anything. Then all of a sudden, they knelt down and prayed. And she got up. And she said, oh, Hyatt, guess what? I have just received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. I am a Christian now. 
you are a Christian now. She said, I thought you were already a Christian because you went to the Christian church. She said, going to church doesn't make you a Christian. She said, what makes you a Christian is to believe what Aunt Mary has told you these last few days and believe that and receive him as your Savior. And she said, because God's word says, but as many as receive him, this is God's word in John 1, 12, but as many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. She said, Hyatt, don't you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior today? Oh, she said, I don't need to do that. She said, I pray five times a day. I am a good Muslim. And she said, besides, she said, when Nader gets a little older, we're going to go to Mecca. And that was the holy city. And we're going to go to Mecca when he gets a little older. That's their holy city that they face toward Mecca when they pray. And she, as soon as she mentioned Nader, she said, oh, Nader. Oh, she said, oh, I wonder what happened to Nader. Oh, she said, how long had he been here before he started coughing? Aunt Mary said he had been here from the time that the story began. And she said, oh, I'm in trouble. Nader has been spying on me again, and I know he has gone to tell my father at his coppersmith shop. Sure enough, here as she come in sight, she saw her father talking to Nader. And she started to turn around and leave. And he said, come back here. She came back. He said, what have you been doing over at Muna's house? She said, we've been playing and listening to stories. What kind of stories? Well, she said the first day she told about Ali making the heaven and the earth. And the second day she told about Adam and Eve, how he made Adam and Eve. And then the third day she told about Abraham. And I knew about Abraham because you had taught me that. And then Nader speaks up and he said, but today she talked about Jesus Christ and said that Jesus Christ was God's son and that he was truly God. He said, is that true? He said, then you shall not listen to any more of those stories about that infidel, from that infidel. He was so furious. And she said to her father as they were listening, she said, Father, I believe the way you taught me. Well, make sure you do. And you watch her nader so that she will not go anymore to hear those stories from that infidel. Oh, she went home, and on her way home, she was thinking, why does he always have to spy on me? And why are boys more important than girls? Even my mother loves Nader better than she does me. And why do they have to have a celebration when he learns all the Koran? And she said, even he's named after my father. His name is called, her father's name was Abu Nader, and his name was Nader. And she was thinking about this, and she went home, and she was thinking about how much she hated her brother and what she could do because he spied on her. But she went home, and she obeyed her father. She went home and knelt down and prayed the prayers that her father had taught her to pray. And she prayed, turning with facing the holy city, Mecca. So after this, oh, she just couldn't wait to play with her friend again. So that afternoon, she wanted to go to Muna's house after she had prayed. And she started out the door. And as she started out the door, here stood her brother. Where are you going? She said, I'm going out to play. He said, you're going out to listen to those stories from that infidel. 
And mother came in and wanted to know what was going on. Are you two fighting again, she said. She said, oh, yes. Nader said, she is lying. She's going over to Muna's house to listen to those stories from that infidel. And father told me to watch her and not let her go. The last day was supposed to have been the very best story. And this meant she couldn't go to her friend's house. Her mother said, Nader, you watch her. And she said, Hyatt, don't you leave this room the rest of the day. Her heart was broken. She couldn't see her best friend until after she had left. She didn't know what had happened. So after she had left, just before school started, she was allowed to go and to see her friend again. And Muna told her what happened. She said she told the very best story. She said, remember that she told you that Jesus died on the cross? Well, guess what? He didn't stay dead. He's alive and he's living and he's in heaven today. And she said, Muna, she said, you must receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. She said, because, she said, my brother and I don't fight anymore since I have received Christ as Savior. She said, yes, but he's two years older than you. And if Nader was older than me, things would be different maybe. She said, and my mother and father has received Christ as Savior. And we all get along much better now than we ever did. And she said, well, she said, if Nader wouldn't do those things to me, tag along and spy on me and lie, she said, but listen, she wanted her friend to know. She said, but listen, God said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And she was hoping that she would know that it was the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. She wanted her little friend. You see, as soon as we become a child of God, we must begin to tell others. So she told her that it was the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. And she wanted her, just like each of you that are listening, she wanted her best friend to come to know Christ as Savior. May you do that today. Missionary every day Tell the world that Jesus is the way Be it in the town or country Or the busy avenue Africa or Asia The task is up to you Be a missionary every day Tell the world that Jesus is the way The Lord is soon returning